Good morning, Dr. Gary here on the road. We are dental practice brokers nationwide. We sell dental practices. Today's topic is, what are the fears and concerns of the typical DSO when purchasing a dental practice? We're going to get into that, uh, what goes on behind the scenes today. As you know, we are now uh, in 27 states, and we have 10 employees, including two CPA accountants, marketing director, average, uh, operations director, and five development acquisition people, uh, specialists. You can reach us by two, calling 201-663-0935. And you can go to our website, dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebroker.com. And you'll get quite a bit of information. Now we're available to speak to you from 7.30 a.m. East Coast time to 9.30 p.m. So give us a call, concerns or anything that you have. We've now been a dental practice brokers for 12 years now. I was a dentist for 25. So we're just beginning, so to speak. We've only just begun. We'll, give you, we'll be around for a long time. Um, the information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. Now, if you're thinking about selling to a DSO, please make sure you call us because although we are independent, we can pick and choose who we think the best ones for you are. Often they will pay our commission so there'll be no commission to you. Occasionally, depending on circumstances, we can have the legal fees reimbursed upon closing. So please, successful closing. So please uh, give us a ring about that. So getting into today's topic, so what is it that DSOs worry about? What are they cautious about? What are their concerns when they're buying a dental practice? You know, in the end, this isn't some big, huge uh, conglomerate that everybody gets swept up and they slash and crash and everything is run extremely well. They run into problems. And some of their problems are some of the purchases do not work out. And that DSO has to be accountable to the usually, well, although it could be owned privately by a, a family corp or something like that, usually it's a private equity company that owns the DSO. And uh, that private equity company wants to know why is this one deal failing? Why is it costing us money? So they are cautious. Um, one of the biggest concerns the DSO will have, this is why they do, you know, there's so much due diligence that will occur. There's just a significant amount of due diligence, a significant amount. And you won't believe how much paperwork they're asking for, but there's a reason for it. They have to be careful, they're cautious, because they're only going to net from the sale of your dental practice about somewhere between 15 to 19%. That's what their net is. Um, you know, because obviously they have to pay all the doctors, so they have to make a responsible decision. One of the biggest concerns is, and I'm, I'm dealing with this right now, is the seller kind of went into retirement mode, didn't really produce dentistry. And as you know, they don't pay you everything up front. They do hold back some monies, maybe 20, 25%. And, you know, you've got to keep the levels of the, assuming that the DSO is doing their job, management, advertising, marketing, uh, getting payments on time from the insurance company, processing the insurance, assuming the DSO is doing everything they should be. Um, they're expecting you to produce. I mean, it's only natural. And that's why they'll hold back certain monies because if the practice doesn't maintain, generally it's flat line, gross income, or hopefully it's gross income, um, that you know, you will get a little penalized on that 20% they're holding back. So that's something for you to uh, to consider. Uh, they do have fear that you're not going to work as the dentist. You're not going to work because historically they need the dentist to stay on uh, and they'll hold those monies back. 
So they are have a, they are cautious about that, and we're going through one of those right now. The uh, DSO is, is a little hesitant. They just want to make sure that this seller is going to be producing the dentistry so they can carry their overhead. So they got big overhead. You know, they have a hard, huge corp. I mean, they're going to reduce some of your expenses, supplies and marketing and so forth, uh, equipment. But still, they need a producer. And these are some of the fears that they deal with. Consequently, you're going to see a significant amount of uh, due diligence. Another fear is that uh, they try to maintain the same staff that you have. They'll try to maintain continuity. So you're comfortable, they're comfortable. Um, in the event that they do bring in a regional manager, they want you to be, uh, to at least work with the regional manager, um, to be open to new concepts. Uh, maybe they'll suggest some continuing education. Historically, they don't govern the type of uh, clinical work you're doing. They don't dictate, um, but had problems in the past. This is live case. The seller essentially didn't want to let go of the reins, the control of the practice. Well, you've really become a, uh, you, you know, you're really just, you're more of an employee, associate employee. So um, if they send in a regional manager, you, you've got to be at least compliant and listen to them. Uh, if they want to get away from impression material and do everything with digital scanning, I mean, uh, you'll find it's more efficient and it should work well on most patients. So you've got to be open to these concepts. So by the doctor, two problems. The doctor doesn't want to work or the doctor doesn't adapt to the form. He's now an employee and can't let go of the reins. Also, doctor may not want to listen to management. They're always going to have some kind of regional manager. So that's something to be aware of. And that's what we found. Uh, or some of the concerns of the DSOs, some of the problems that have happened in the past, uh, and they're cautious about that. So just be aware of that, and that's what goes on. Those are the concerns. Thank you for listening today. Call us anytime you have questions or issues. If you want a free appraisal, call us. We'll be happy to accommodate you. Thank you. Bye now.